Hello, friends. Uh, it's your Chapo for this week. It's me, Will Menneker. Joining me, as always, Matt Christman. Hi. Felix Biederman. Hello, everyone. And Virgil, Texas. Hi. Hello. Uh, before we start the show, just a little brief house cleaning on an issue that I know you guys are interested in. I'm talking about merch. And if you're listening to this right now, I'm going to let you know that you will be given a special opportunity in the show information of this very episode you're listening to to purchase the latest run of Chapo Trap House t-shirts. We did it uh, last time for the election show. A lot of people were, where's my t-shirt? Where's my t-shirt? There just weren't enough. Now is your opportunity to get more t-shirts. Also, sitting in, joining us in the, in the Trap House mansion, Tim Heidecker. Tim, how's Good it going? Good afternoon. Good to be here in the flesh. Welcome to New York, New York. The city so nice. Brooklyn, they, New York. They, Brooklyn, New York. They named, the city <laughs> yeah, so nice, they named it Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> the city that never fucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that classic slice. That's because yeah. he knows how to do it when he comes to I did. To New York. I stopped by an old haunt in the Williamsburg district mm-hmm. for a, an eggplant slice. Oh, and ooh. I requested the eggplant slice, which I used to get when I lived here years ago. And it was not, they didn't have it. So they had what? to make, they had made a, an eggplant pie. Uh, and so it took like 30 minutes for this stupid, simple slice. So that's why I'm on time. Usually I'm much earlier <laughs> than I need to be. Uh, yeah, goddamn those simpletons who run that. Uh, this, yeah. this is gentrification is we, doing we to you. Papa right. John's. Yeah. The one in, um, we were going to name them and shame them. <laughs> you, are to, you are to make an extra large Eggplant pie. You are to take thirty minutes. You are not to fill any other orders. I will yeah. have one slice, and you will dispose of the rest. <laughs> right. If I see you selling it to anyone else, I will read out your address, your parents' address, all that. Were you going to read it on the show? I'll tell you a little small act of kindness I did. I got the Coke bef- while I was waiting for my slice. Uh-huh. I get the Coke. So fountain so, soda, so, fountain Coke, fountain Coke. Yeah, okay, best kind. Yeah, and I story. actually asked for a diet Coke, but then she says, "You say Coke," and I've made that choice. So, yeah, just Go Coke. For it. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> okay. but, yeah. So then I, New York, baby. I slurp through that Coke. And then the pizza's still not there, so when I go to get the slice, I'm like, can I get a little refill there? And she takes a pause, and then she goes, it's a dollar. And I go, that's fine. And I go to give her a dollar, but then she makes eye contact with somebody else back there, and she goes, it's okay. But then I go, it's fine. Here, it's a dollar. I'll, I'll pay. But she goes, no, no, no. And I was like, you pay, f- you pay for the Coke syrup, so I'll just pay. F-. <laughs> but she insisted, so... Anyways, I did my best to pay for what I what I just, what I got. I mean, so. a, a classic move is to carry slice of life stuff here. <laughs> well, I was gonna Only say cl- in New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the classic move is to carry or with you at all times like a fount- a generic sort of yeah. cola fountain soda cup. Mm-hmm. Take it into fast food and other establishments mm-hmm. and just get a refill. And mm-hmm. if anyone just say, "No, this is my free refill. I already, right. I already paid for this." Real cool thing to do is to go in there with your cup, but you're also wearing a GoPro, and you review soda fountains, <laughs> and you get into huge involved arguments with the workers at whatever fast food place because you're like, uh, I don't think you refilled the syrup bags on time. Holy I can shit. tell that the that it's biodegrading, and yeah, you can oh my just God. have a big YouTube channel. I finally that. get it. I finally get like the fucking train bullshit and the elevators. Like I'm always oh, like, your soda machine this guy? is stupid. Who cares? But there is such a vast difference in quality between mm. different soda machines. <laughs> Break through. Break through. Like, it's Break gen- through. like some places they have too much syrup. This some was places this was don't a little, have enough syrup. This was not uh, as crisp as I like it. Exactly. This, yeah. it was, it was a little it's like syrupy. there is like a platonic a ideal of a fountain soda, and it varies wildly from establishment your, to establishment. Your best bet's going to be the can. <laughs> yeah, that's always going to be the can. Reality. But like a good fountain soda is the best mm-hmm. possible soda. The best, yes, the, and, that's the and, highest. But ideal. so, like, if you had a YouTube channel that reviewed <laughs> where to get <laughs> the best calibrated soda, I would watch that. It's I'm just watching the there, that community videos. absolutely exists. It's it, all men dude. who look exactly like Matt, and they're yeah. <laughs> sitting in these uh, rooms decked out with you know like posters for Tab and all these <laughs> brands that don't exist anymore, and they're just like. Uh, uh, hey guys, Steve here. How y'all doing? Uh, so today I reviewed the soda machine at the Target down on Route 73. <laughs> yeah, they, they have all of the last uh, uh, new Coke. They have it all in their basement. Yeah, well, there's that- those great YouTube videos that, uh, you know, guys reviewing like um, 
the can, the cans of like spaghetti, like the, you know the <laughs> yeah. chef, chef Boyardee cans. <laughs> yes, yes. The chunky soup guy. Yeah. Those are the best. That's like a dark, dark place to go. <laughs> we we have an elevator. Me and Virgil have an elevator guy. We like to watch Diesel Ducey. Check him out. He does yeah. elevators. Yeah, and. <laughs> He's like, you know, most of these types of channels, like, yeah, it's like just a guy in his room talking about the can density of chunky New England clam chowder. <laughs> but Diesel Doozy, there is like a very cool espionage element because he has to sneak into these construction sites to ride their elevators. He's reviewing elevators? Is yeah. That right? Oh, and he has a trademark. He flashes like a little toy train at the camera and he's like, Diesel Doozy here. <laughs> and he's just, it's like 007 <laughs> da, 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 da. And he's our favorite guy See I thought he was Steve Ducey's son yeah. <laughs> I thought he was We could do that we could I remember the, that the one really. you showed me Of a Diesel Ducey that I loved Is that he was like he was approaching a building And he was like uh, we're coming up on the On the security camera that was installed Because of me <laughs> oh. He is literally changing Ouch. the world He's changing the world around him. Oh, we should we should fucking get him on the show. Yeah, Diesel should, Ducey coming yeah. out. I was, I'm staying in this super high rise in Times Square here because you know I'm fancy uh, show <laughs> Times Square W. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The no, guy who the they make eggplant oh, okay. pies and for. Yeah. What's that? You make the, they make the eggplant pies just for you. Just for me. Yeah. But I'm up on like this 45th floor or something, and f I haven't had this feeling in a while. But going that high, I felt this feeling of. This is this could go like this could snap and it would be over like yeah. I had that, the weight of the elevator. That's true, but if you jump at just the right, that's moment. what I was <laughs> thinking. I was thinking if I just jump every second while it's going down, you have to time I'm it like, just time right it. though. It's yeah. so weird. I was really thinking that in the elevator. I used to, it's the only defense. Well, yeah. it's not. You wouldn't die even if any of the cable snapped. And not, there are redundant cables as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, the safety. Locking mechanism Can't. invented by Samuel Otis, okay. but perfected by Tiss and Cross. <laughs> I, I used to like when I was like fourteen, and uh, just from like watching uh, like FX shows, I thought you would have sex through brooding. Like, just looking depressed around women. But I thought the other way to do it was to be in dangerous situations. Like, when I would go into a building or a plane, I would fantasize about it crashing or falling apart and me surviving in a cool way. <laughs> and thinking that women would want to fuck me after that. Yeah. Which is like, why does why a woman's like, oh, I saw you descend down an elevator cable and you're... <laughs> Yeah, you're well, a 14 year old with a bowl cut who you, like <laughs> just sweats when he mother talks. you and smother well, you. Well, um, now that we've uh, yeah we've made our, we've made our lives better, and uh, to move to move on to a slightly different tack, another person who's making all of our lives better, of course, is our president. He's still in the news. President, <laughs> you heard about man. this? <laughs> <laughs> just a, just a few things I wanted to to bring up uh, about that. Um, he still has to talk about um, his son. And just now here, his, his son's in a little bit of trouble, and like any, you know, like any dad, you'd have to, you have to come to the defense of your kid, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like whether it's on the Little League field or on CNN. So I just want to, I want to start out here, but I just want to, I want to play this, this news clip of Trump talking about his, uh, his beautiful boy. <laughs> My son is a wonderful young man. <laughs> he took a meeting with a Russian lawyer. Russian. Not a Russian lawyer government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. Okay. Uh, it was a short meeting. Uh, it was a meeting that uh, went very, very quickly, very fast. <laughs> Two other people in the room, they, I guess one of them left almost immediately, and the other almost one immediately. was uh, not really <laughs> focused on the meeting. I do think this, I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. <laughs> I love how he's able to achieve that tone yeah. of whatever. Uh, this is the most reasonable thing I could possibly be saying. You what, know, <laughs> we breathe oxygen. What I like about that is that he opens it up by saying, my son is a wonderful young man. He's 40. His yeah, son, his son yeah. is 40 years old. Yeah. It's like that's what you say to the principal when your kid is fought shitting in like the urinal at the fucking preschool. And it's like, he's a wonderful young man. <laughs> I thought, Please I was, let him back into your school. I was thinking about how like Trump's move his entire life life before he was president whenever he would get in trouble like he would break some building code or like just like call any any like female celebrity ugly for no reason he would just have a, his lawyer write an open letter to like the new york post being like mr trump is actually incredibly regular and <laughs> yeah. everything he just did is what a normal person would do <laughs> and now that he's president he like can't really do that anymore so he has to like he has to be his own advocate and but every time like something weird happens, it's always that it's just like, I want to assure you that my son is of the most regular quality. <laughs> well, it's like he 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 did 
earlier in the when he first came into office and the Russia thing was just starting to bubble up, his big move was he was gonna like do a registered letter saying that he didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah, the <laughs> Genius. registered letter. Genius. It's, like, the best. it's registered. That's like you can't lie in a registered letter. You go to jail. I mean, it's obviously a strategy he's used for many, many years. Yeah. Is you just never give an inch. You never yeah. acknowledge yeah. any wrongdoing. You never apologize. And what can you do with that? That's yeah, what we do. That's what we do. It's yeah. a secret yeah. to our success. Normal. <laughs> no, no, normal. His defense of it was that it was a quick meeting. They weren't yeah. really paying attention. They didn't. They didn't even finish the little water bottles that were on the table. Yeah. When I met with President... I love the... It left almost immediately. <laughs> it's like... It's like did, that. The, did the 360, like, came in with... Oh, yeah. see <laughs> but I do, like, believe him when he says that they left immediately because it's like... Well, if you our, met our, Don Jr., you're like, okay, this is not... Yeah, this is going fruitful. nowhere. <laughs> this is going... Avenue. No, I mean, that's what we've said. Like, we think, like, yeah, obviously there's some weird shit there, but we don't think, like, the Luis Mensch thing of, like, mm -hmm. this is a 40-year plan and Donald Trump's right. a secret communist and this is part of a 20-step plan. Yeah. It's, it's like, they're very dumb people. That's and, like, of course, if he met the lawyer, he Don Jr. would just, like, he would talk about, like, how like Cabela's doesn't recognize his national premium card or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, of course it would like kind of go nowhere because these are incredibly dumb, distracted people, all of them. Well, that's where I keep thinking or I, my, my gut keeps saying like, if this is, this is the collusion you guys are talking about, then where is the other stuff? Cause you know, th they, this is the meeting they took. It's the dumbest. It's Goldstone yeah. is setting yeah. it up. Like, yeah. These are the the the, the bottom of the barrel yeah. Russian types. Can you talk about seems. that guy, uh, uh, Rob Goldstone, who's been another awesome. a wonderful like sort awesome. of zillic figure that's uh, emerged out of this whole uh, controversy. He's sort of like a. He's a basically big... if Fred Flintstone came to life. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's he's yeah he's uh, Fred Flintstein. <laughs> it's Fred Flintstone who came to life and went on a sex tour of the Southeast Asia. Yeah, but they, I guess they say that this could have been them sort of testing the waters to right. see if they'd be open yeah. to more collaboration right. collusion. But so we'll see. It's like I mean they're testing the waters, but it's like they went into a wading pool with floaters on and almost drowned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. yeah, you like go in a room with Donald Jr. and like his mouth is open the whole time, <laughs> and he's like holding a rhino dick. That he's <laughs> <laughs> so like, I killed this. It's like that's very nice. Put it away. Yeah, no, it's like uh, he's like look. If it were an important meeting, there would have been a spread. There would be food. <laughs> when I met with President <laughs> Xi at Mar Xi. my golf course, I mean, when I met with the president of China, China. We, we, had, we had an excellent, we had excellent cake. Beautiful chocolate cake. I introduced cake. President Xi to a beverage that I invented. <laughs> it's half lemonade, half iced tea. <laughs> it's the most refreshing summer beverage you could have. We love it in Mar-a-Lago. It's called the Trump. It's called the Donald Trump. It's a delicious beverage. That's how we have a real meeting. There is no beverages consumed at this meeting. Huge shout out to Mike Fossey for the Arnold Palmer joke. One of the best ever. I, I, the other thing he said about Donald Jr. that has stuck with me is when he called him a high quality person. High quality I love person. my limited run son. <laughs> I love my, my special <laughs> edition Exclusive child. Son. <laughs> There's another, another thing that, uh, that happened recently. Uh, Trump had a fairly amazing quote about uh, this border wall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, like those are the because it's like oh get a load of this idiot and then these quotes like that are like oh he could kill everyone. Well, he's like, backing him. He's painting himself into a, a corner where he he has to maybe up his ridiculous game every couple weeks. Yeah. Well, he he he's has. He's gonna be posting pictures of his shit in his to his own shit <laughs> yeah. in his toilet. This is what I think of CNN. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, okay, I guess he topped. topped oh God, off. and then every shut idiot on the internet is gonna sh do their own shit post. Be <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, stand in solidarity with the president. <laughs> I'm, and I'm, half yeah. of it's gonna be like, there's a lot of blood in there, dude. You should go to the doctor. <laughs> well, you have to respect. Donald Trump's shits. They're very healthy looking, you know, and maybe we should be less prudish about human yeah. fecal matter. Hey, you, I know. mean, one of them took a meeting with a Russian fucking um, a lawyer. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, that's tr impressive. Trump is going to do the dick print challenge. Like, he's going to be mm -hmm. like the rapper of the game, and he's going to be wearing, like, his Under Armour shorts in the mirror, and you just see the outline of his dick while he's flex flexing. He's just going to hashtag it up like the game, and it's going to be like, young and handsome, rich, <laughs> you big dick ass mo motherfucker. Uh, you know, well, ladies, we'll hit me up. You're predicting a Trump dick pic before the end of his, uh, his uh, presidency. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think it's the only logical move. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you read either, Maki... Either his shit in the toilet or his penis. Well, it's question, one or the other. If you read Machiavelli's The Prince. It's, it's basically, 
it, it all comes down to whether or not he figures out how to use the camera on his phone. Right. Because yeah. I don't think he d- can do that. I think because nah. they say the only app on his phone is Twitter. Right. He only knows how to do that. So he right. probably doesn't even know it has a camera on it. Yeah. If someone teaches him how to use the camera, <laughs> it's over. It is fucking over. <laughs> We're yeah. done. He for would it. take so many pictures in the Oval Office. Oh my god. Yeah. It would be yeah. He'd be like one of those teens that like t- just my dad got me a new credit card. Here it is, yeah, and they yeah. post a photo. Yeah, of it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> new nuclear so, codes for the I week. Like, I like when his Twitter uh, starts sounding like a diary entries. Have you noticed that? Like, <laughs> when he's going overseas, he's like, "Just left for Paris. Can't <laughs> wait to get there and see my friend." <laughs> well, I was talking to Vic the other day, Vic Berger, and oh yeah, um, oh yeah. We were. T- he sent me that handshake. You know that long oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. handshake, yeah. the yeah. Macron handshake, and it dawned on me. I was like. This guy falls in love so quickly. As soon yep. as anyone gives him any kind of attention or yep. any kind of appreciation, he's in. He's just like all in with that person. Well, yeah, like we're talking Z, the president of China. Yeah, he spent yeah. the entire campaign yeah. like China is the boogeyman, and he meets him once in Mar-a-Lago, and they split the beautiful cake. He's like, this guy's amazing. Yeah, Taiwan belongs to the mainland. People. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, also during the campaign, he was like, Saudi Arabia did 9-11. And then he goes there, and they just put on a fancy dance yeah. for him, and put his big fat head on a hotel. Well, that happened in um, in France too, where he's yeah. like, all during the campaign, he's like, Paris is done, it's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. there is no such thing as France anymore. Yeah. And then he's there, he's like, it's actually very nice. It's very. Jim we're... never goes, but now he's coming back, Jim. folks. <laughs> I talked to Macron, and then I went and said, Jim, Jim, you got to come back to Paris. It's amazing now. Well, Jim, the giant Quran that wanders the streets and envelops children, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> the, the Macron killed it. But uh, I do. Actually, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Tim, I, w- mm-hmm. uh, I would like to get you to do the read. Uh, do a reading now uh, from this is just Trump's actual quote okay. here. So there's 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 two sort of uh, yeah. slides here. Yeah. But, uh, okay, here you go. This is these are Trump's comments on the, what's the status of his border wall. Um, and this is in, this was him speaking in, in, on is, the Air Force One yeah, to yeah. reporters. Yeah, this, this is part of the. Uh, he was being asked this by a, a so journalist. So someone says you were joking about solar, making the border wall out of solar. <laughs> Look, there's no better place for solar than the Mexican border, the southern border. And this isn't the funny part. And he says, and there's a very good chance we can do a solar wall, which would actually look good. But there is a very good chance we could do a solar wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, DJ, run that shit back. So he's just talking to his own brain. <laughs> one of the things with the wall is you have to need. One of the things with the wall is you need transparency. You have to be able to see through it. <laughs> In other words, if you can't see through that wall, so it, it could be a steel wall with openings, but you have to have openings because you have to see what's on the other side of the wall. <laughs> so and I'll give you an example. As horrible as it sounds, when they throw the large sacks of drugs over, and <laughs> if you have people on the other side of the wall, you don't see them. They hit you on the head with 60 pounds of stuff. It's over. <laughs> it's over, folks. Okay? As crazy as that sounds, I'm not, it says cray in here, but that's been corrected. <laughs> yeah. He said, he didn't say cray. As crazy as that sounds, you need transparency through the wall. <laughs> but we have some incredible designs. <laughs> 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 That's my. The thing is, somebody yeah. said to me that the well, the best way to explain that is that in some meeting about the construction of it, someone said, "Well, the project needs transparency yeah. in like and awarding, like in awarding, you know, <laughs> yeah. contracts and stuff." And he said, yeah. "Yeah, you're right. It does need to be transparent." Oh my god! Because there's another thing he did earlier that is in that vein of him just genuinely not understanding, like an uh, uh, misinterpreting an obvious word, even in, in the context. He was in the Oval Office with a reporter, and the reporter said. You know, George Bush once said, George W. Bush said that uh, the Oval Office is an oval because that means there's oh, nowhere to hide. Great. And he goes, well, yeah, that's true. I mean, you could be in the corner or something, and but uh, someone could see you out the window, I guess, but there's <laughs> nobody out there. <laughs> <laughs> so he took him literally like, okay, could I hide in here? I was like, oh, no, yeah, I could. Under the desk. <laughs> like, I, like he, he could not operate at the level of like of, of a metaphorical language. So when he yeah, heard transparency, yeah. the right. wall has to be transparent, he literally thought that meant you had to be able to see through it. President, President Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> I've, never, yes. I've never seen him sincerely laugh. I've never seen him be able to acknowledge the concept of humor, yeah. of figurative language. He, he has yeah. no abstract thought. It's kind of astounding. He doesn't have object permanence or abstract thought. What about thought. the... Uh, the low, low, 
remark he made to Buzz Aldrin about um, <laughs> about <laughs> Infinity, right? That was oh that? so that, that was some AJ <laughs> Soprano shit. That ever. was like that was, that was like could be. brain we don't, dying. It was Steve Rule. It was, could be. It, it, we, <laughs> we don't know. It might be. <laughs> but there might <laughs> be something there. When we were when we were watching Infinity, when we were watching the inauguration speech, and he was like. No one could go outside in America because yeah. they'll be killed by uh, <laughs> yeah, gangs yeah. who ask them for a dollar <laughs> when they're carrying electronics back. Heroes like Bernard Getz. Like it was like it was like the, his concept of crime. It, it, it seems like he lives in the eighties. Yeah, but now Charles I don't Bronson. even think I don't think it's that. Like the wall quote and all the other shit. He lives in like a zany, madcap, crime-filled universe. He lives in nineteen sixties live action Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? He's like it's like the the infomercials. He's like the zany Matthew guy. Matthew Lesko. Yeah, he goes. The money they don't want you to know about. <laughs> right, if right, you, right. We, I think we could start a campaign now to convince Trump that that guy is the Riddler. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> to get the FBI and he's lo- loose in Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the name of his book? It's free money from the government. Oh yeah. Right. It's like. Mr. Trump, this guy is stealing from the Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> folks, uh, folks, we have bad news. Uh, the Washington Monument has been cut in half by A-10 warthogs, <laughs> but the Riddler is done for. You think, you think that's funny, but you remember that book that was like the hundred liberals who were ruining America? Was that, uh, oh, yeah, Bernard Goldberg. Bernard Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah. He was on that book. Matthew Lesko was <laughs> on that book what? convincing really? people that, that, oh, the government is just a source of free money. <laughs> He's one of the hundred people. Yo, dude, they, they are not trying to drag our man Matthew Lesko Hell I've no, actually dude. heard uh, from people who live in the DC area that he wears that outfit all the time in public that's and fucking that's right. that's that's so cool, cool. and yeah. drives a car with those with the question marks on it so he, he kicks ass he basically hey. is a Batman villain he is a yeah. live, live Batman villain and why folks we gotta take care of him why he's on the list why can't we nominate a guy like that he's flamboyant he's popular he's good free money from the government Great should be, be the future of American politics <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like you know um, not to change the subject slightly the, the Trump brain uh, w- when he's watching the, when he's reading when he's reading a speech and he decides to comment on something he's just read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in it, he does. It, I just saw he did it the other day in his weekly address. Which, have you noticed that he, they have to do the two angles because they're obviously cutting together like yeah. several yeah. takes. Yeah. But maybe they've done that for other presidents. But this was like this side angle's off. Like the glass of know, Coke on the desk. Yeah. Like every time it cuts, yeah. it's, the, 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 the level down. goes but, up and down. But it's like Homer being interviewed. If, if you know anything sweet, about sweet filmmaking, you know which maybe these guys don't. But like you want that side angle to be like significantly different yeah. in, in size so it's yeah. not this weird like right yeah sh- yeah, just, yeah. You know, sh- <laughs> but he'll say something like uh you know obamacare you know obamacare is on the verge of collapsing and i mean collapsing <laughs> <laughs> and folks it's collapsing <laughs> And you're like, you just, you don't have to say that three times. <laughs> you just can read the speech. You're trying to make it natural, but it's like highlighting. So it's highlighting the speech that it's being read. He's like, like whenever you, I listen to a lot of mixtapes and every mixtape, whenever like the first 20 seconds of the song, they'll be like, yo, DJ, you need to run that shit back. And it'll just be like an okay punchline. Uh-huh. And that's Trump. Trump's brain is chopped and screwed. Yeah. <laughs> He's the best. He and he's gonna win again, and I can't wait. <laughs> like he is going to beat. People don't realize. Like the Democrats are going to run. Like Cory Booker and Zuckerberg, and Zuckerberg really? Yeah, they're gonna run both of them. Not as president, gonna vice president, them but together. as co. Yeah. co- they're gonna clone them together. They're gonna put them in the transporter at the same time. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, look. The guy with like double dementia is just way more appealing than that. <laughs> it's cool that he chops and screws his words because it does help people understand it. After <laughs> Trump came back from the G20, he gave that that interview on uh, what was it CBC, right? The, with that skeleton, fucking hundred year old uh, <laughs> Pat, uh, guy, Pat Robertson, I, I believe it was. It A was true yeah. skeleton, and, uh, and like someone the, wearing the skin of Pat Robertson. <laughs> and uh, the money quote was him saying, "Yeah, you know, I just got back." From the G20, there were 20 leaders there, <laughs> and I was friends with all of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm, I like when he goes, I think I'm friends with all, I think they're <laughs> friends with me. I think I am. Sorry. Well, Trump is not like, the right wing people wanted Trump to be, you know, God emperor. But he's not, but he's something more powerful. Trump is like all our special guy, like he's our son. 
Trump is our son who we send on birthright to be like, I had a great time. I saw the Wailing Wall. It was so important to me. I swear I'm going to go to Temple now when he gets back. We send him to Saudi Arabia and be like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. You guys are so great. I'm Muslim now. We sent him to G20, which was his just regular secular summer camp. And it's like, yeah, okay. People can say he does bad things, but this is like, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to yeah. see him like go out in the world. Trump is I don't know. I'm, I'm, fun. I'm having some regrets voting for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not me. All the way. Well, yeah. I don't want to, uh, I've already donated to his re-election campaign. <laughs> I don't want to... Uh, Belabor Trump too much, you know. He is our president, but like I said, we, we could have had we could have had another way. We could have gone down another path, if you will, because there were two paths mm -hmm. set before us. There was Trump on one hand, and then there was our boy John Kasich on the other. And I'm referring, of course, legend, favorite, legend. humble Midwestern gentleman hobo. I'm referring, My mom. I like John Kasich. <laughs> <laughs> I like Who could you I, look? Look at yeah. Look at yeah, him. Look like, at his face. Like yeah, sweet uh, pockmarked boy. Yeah, <laughs> little weird. We we could have we could have had Kasich. Yeah, we yeah. could have had Kasich, who's a good man and not a and not a vulgarian like Trump. Yeah, and nice guys always finish last. And uh, <laughs> yeah, a good. <laughs> He's like uh, Cha Chauncey Gardner. Chauncey yeah. Gardner from oh, wow. uh, being actually, there or something. Like that. I've actually never noticed this about the Two Paths book. Uh, on the the front cover is his sort of. Weathered, pockmarked face. Look at the uh, look at like the image on the back Lang cover. Is. <laughs> was that Mike Pence taking a picture? <laughs> the <laughs> it does look, the back photo is Kasich giving a high five to a boy. <laughs> oh, and yes, Mike uh, Pence is taking so a, a, take a picture of it. We've we've read from this book before. This is John Kasich's sort of post-election book called Two Paths: America Divided or United." That is really just a collection of his. You know, it's completely charming, rambling, charming, speech. charming, rambling anecdotes, and I'd like to uh, to share now with Tim and uh, with my co-hosts and the listeners just a few Kasich anecdotes on the show. So this one, uh, the, the the setup for this first one uh, is he's talking about a campaign event uh, where he got a chance to speak from the heart, and he says here, "All this helps to set the stage for me at that very first debate, where I had to fight just to be heard." When I was asked how I'd explain my opposition to same-sex marriage to a daughter who might be gay, it was my one opportunity that night to speak personally on an issue, and I grabbed at it. I said, look, I'm an old-fashioned person, and I happen to believe in traditional marriage, but the court has ruled, and we have to accept it. Just because somebody doesn't think the way I do, it doesn't mean I can't care about them or I can't love them. If one of my daughters happened to be gay, of course, I would accept her. Of course, I would love her. That's what we're taught when we have strong faith. And I've got to tell you, issues like that are planted to divide us. But let's treat everybody with respect. Let them share in the great American dream we have here in this country. I'll love my daughters no matter what they do because God gives me unconditional love. And I'm going to give it to my family and my friends and the people around me. That's nice. And then the parentheses after the, this story, he says, for what it's worth, Emma was watching the debate and it occurred to her that her friends might think we were talking about her. So she took the time to set the record straight and tweeted, I am not gay. <laughs> <laughs> so Kasich embarrassing his daughter at his the daughter. first Republican <laughs> debate. Look, yeah. look, I... I if I had a, you know, if my daughter was gay, it would be pretty cool. <laughs> and some people find that out a little bit later in life. Uh, Emma tweeted out, I'm not gay. I'm not John Kasich's daughter. Uh, <laughs> get this homeless person to stop calling me <laughs> from pay phones. <laughs> this is another one. So one of Kasich's big thing on the campaign trail was, of course, his his love of food. Yeah. And oh, eating yeah. food. Uh, he he goes, didn't know when he was going to get his next hot meal. <laughs> yeah, there's some really funny footage, Tim, of him mm, on Arthur Avenue <laughs> during, the New York, during the New York primary. He went to Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, yeah. and he went to one of those Italian restaurants, and they just kept bringing him food. And there's like, <laughs> it's just him in this this uh, deli, surrounded by media, just like with his head oh, yeah. down, just yeah. housing pasta fazool. Uh, and they bring in uh, like a plate of ani pasta, and he's like, eh, manja! Really? <laughs> yeah, it's oh, hilarious. He's not even, yeah, he's not even talking or doing nope, any campaign. He's not doing this any is the politicking. first day of the New York primary yeah. campaign. <laughs> and... Uh, I like to think this was a ruse that politicians sometimes do, is if they're getting asked tough questions at, at, a, at a photo op, just you know, shove 
food in your face. Like, you know, I can't answer. So, you know, Kasich had to answer for allegations that he's been selling uh, fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this next one comes, it gives you a little bit of flavor about like life on the campaign trail and on the, on the Kasich bus, the, the, the Kasich Express. He says, very quickly, the bus became a kind of clubhouse for our team, a place to unwind at the end of each long day. And let me tell you, some of those days were long. We'd get going at about 8 o'clock each morning and be running until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Typically, we'd do two or three town halls each day with a lunch event and media appearances slotted in throughout the day. Most evenings, there'd be a fundraising dinner, too. At night, we'd unwind on the bus with a bottle of wine or two, which for some reason we took to calling Wayne, as in, where's the Wayne? What? For the life... (laughs) Was there a fucking leak on that bus? It's a gas leak on the bus. I'll give him a pass on that. That's that's like we're on tour right now, and that's the kind of shit that happens. Yeah. You probably wouldn't put it in your book. (laughs) But... (laughs) I just see how that could happen. To be fair, we did spend about a 40-minute cab ride just saying the word geo-hell over and over again. (laughs) So they took to calling... uh, uh, wine Wayne, and he said, for the life of me, I can't tell you how that started, but that became shorthand whenever it was time to kick back and unwind and set aside the events of the day. We ate a lot of Cape Cod potato chips, <laughs> as I recall, and I was simply <laughs> paid for this product placement. So the, uh, the, original, the original draft of this book was like 14 pages, and the editor was like, can you, can you talk about like the food you ate, or <laughs> nicknames you gave stuff, or anything? <laughs> Governor Kasich your demographic of Home Depot conversation dads <laughs> is perfect for the Cape Cod potato chip company. <laughs> we will pay you handsomely. Yeah, to branded. Just talk about your experiences in your bizarre stories about children that go nowhere. Well, he continues. He said, we would snack on the bus, but we wouldn't take our meals there. That was one of our rules of the road, which meant we ate at a lot of local joints. <laughs> Once, after an impromptu meal at one such restaurant in Iowa, our entire team got sick from something everybody had eaten. Mm. Everybody, that is, except me. I didn't eat anything. <laughs> Try as I might, I couldn't eat anything. The place we'd wandered what? into is one of those what? generic-looking restaurants with every different type of food. <laughs> and my meal <laughs> tasted terrible. I thought it was better off going hungry, but when I pushed my plate aside, Doug Priest, this is his campaign manager, had the presence of mind to suggest someone at our table ought to eat it because we didn't want the waiters and kitchen staff thinking we didn't like their food. (laughs) After all, people knew who we were. There were reporters following us around. We didn't didn't. want to put it out there that the food place we ate was lousy. So he had the presence of mind to give someone else food poisoning. Yeah, Yeah, he dropped, he jumped on the... Jumped on the grenade there. I do love the idea that they're thinking in a campaign where Donald Trump is calling his opponents pussies on television. (laughs) There's going to be a uh, just just in John Kasich doesn't finish his BLT. Well, he couldn't he couldn't finish it because he had to go outside and carve three squiggly lines (laughs) door frame to warn people. He said, "Yeah, we didn't want to make a big deal of it, but I did." Mark a hobo hieroglyph on the nearest water tower to let people know bad vittles ahead. I, I, I just I like how like the <laughs> there are people on his campaign who have such loyalty to Kasich that they're like, sir, I have I actually have an allergy to everything in this meal, but I will eat it for you. I will die for you, sir. This is you're the only he's like Stannis Baratheon. You're the only honorable man, and Kasich's just not even listening. He's like, ah, you know. They changed the ice cream truck jingle back in 83, and it's never been the same. It used to be for kids and adults, and now it's I, not anymore. He, I, I, I mean, reading that, his annoyance with the menu that has everything on it, he, he's, I totally get that he's one of those like guys who goes to the diner and is like, what, what, what? There's so many... This is too many choices. At the end of this anecdote about giving his staff food poisoning, in parentheses, he says, I'll usually eat anything, but this one time I was saved by my discerning palate. <laughs> and then he tra- just transitions and he says, oh, and as long as we're on the subject of food, my wife Karen was in the habit during the campaign of watching what I ate. Literally. Let me explain. She was always good about making sure I put my best foot forward while I was out campaigning. I'd been crisscrossing the country doing all these events, posing for all the pictures, and Karen would be back home in Ohio paying close attention. If she saw something in the press coverage that struck her as off... Something I could maybe do a little better or avoid doing altogether. She was all over it. In this context, that she called me up one evening and said, John, I really think you should stop eating all these different foods in front of people. Kasich was so mad when he when he learned that the decision points title was taken first. Yeah, yeah. 
What about my decision not to eat that food? <laughs> I can like actually, you know how they're like, oh, a candidate you can see yourself having a beer with. That's stupid. But like me and Virgil, we can see ourselves arguing about lunch for three hours for Casey. Oh yeah, oh, and that's yeah. why we like him. Yeah, he definitely wins the uh, the lunch uh, primary. He would come over here. He would he would ask where the outlet plug is. He would like complain about his phone, and then he would just fumble around Grubhub with us for hours. He would get in an argument with Ernest over a seat. Yeah. <laughs> I was once in a car with Virgil and Felix at three in the morning, and, it, and they had a discussion <laughs> over whether they needed to call ahead to the nearest Seven Eleven to make sure that they had hot dogs on the roller ready for them. <laughs> and I guarantee you that if John Kasich had been in that car too, he would have been an enthusiastic. You'd be like, oh, gee, definitely. Definitely call ahead. You know, you can never be too careful. You know, in worst case scenario, you have a conversation with somebody. (laughs) That's like why we were the millennial outreach for Kasich. All right. uh, One one last story from the book. This involves uh, Kasich uh, being at 30 Rock and meeting a celeb in the green room. He goes... uh, it's a tell-all. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do the show live because it was like, blah, blah, blah. Phil Griffin was there in the green room to greet me, along with Chris Matthews, the host of one of the network's flagship programs. He's talking about, he's talking about hardball, folks. Mm-hmm. And he says, we talked for a bit, and then we were joined by a third person, an unlikely visitor on this scene. I recognize him immediately, Academy Award winning actor Tom Hanks, who, who, who is in the building to promote his latest movie, Sully, in which he <laughs> plays the title character, Chelsea Sullenberger, the United uh, Airlines pilot, Chelsea who famously landed a passenger plane on New York's Hudson River. Uh, uh, it's 82 minutes long, uh, <laughs> produced by Paramount Pictures. Yes. <laughs> uh, just a uh, just, uh, cut and paste for the Wikipedia plot summary. Did uh, you, by the way, can, can we talk about that movie for a second? Have you guys seen it? It is I hilarious. Haven't, I, have not I haven't seen it. Seen it. it no. is really funny. It's so funny because there's nothing to tell. There's yeah. not really. There's like, yeah. a, it's like he, a, they it could do be it a, five a, times. Yeah, and half of the time they're dreams. Yeah. They're like they're fan like you know nightmare fantasies about if he would have crashed. Right. So they're like we got to pad this yeah. out with <laughs> fantasies yeah. and dreams. Yeah, because it's like. So it starts off with him dream crashing into a plane, yeah. <laughs> and then they show him like actually crashing the plane, and then they like cut to him doing other things, and then he goes back to doing it, and then the final like let's see how it really happened, mm-hmm. like the big climactic moment is the fucking plane crash, which yeah. has already happened four times. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like the the computer simulations that they which you're, you're in a movie where we I watched it at home, but you're watching a movie of computer simulations <laughs> of planes <laughs> flying. It's they riveting. Also, it's riveting. They also made up this whole controversy. Yeah, right. much as just slandered. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. because like because. It's a it's a latter period Eastwood movie, which means it has to have like that like grumpy Fox News grandpa mm-hmm. like resentment towards like, authority. Yeah, exactly. Towards, like towards these goddamn bureaucracy. Yeah, these right. fucking bureaucrats don't yeah. know what it's like these to pencil pilot push a goddamn plane. Yeah. Pencil pushers telling me what I should have done. <laughs> I like in, in the post department. They're like, so we, we got a couple different composers we're looking to to do a nice big score for this. Clint's like, no, no, I'm just gonna I'm just play jazz piano. Over the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> just set set up the screen and mic the piano, and I'll give it one take and. That'd be your score. <laughs> In my <laughs> United <laughs> Airlines flight. Oh, it is amazing one. to doodle around on my, <laughs> my it, it is, The Lady Eastwood movies are so kind of depressing just because you know he doesn't give a shit mm-hmm, at yeah. all. But it's like, I got nothing else to do. I'm nine like years old. I like being on set. Yeah, it's like all of my family hates me. <laughs> uh, I like I like the craft service table. You I, was, know? I was always disappointed because they made that film. They made just made up some bureaucratic intrigue when, when the real Sully later went on to testify before Congress about labor rights for pilots. Yeah, yeah. no, none of that. None I mean, of that like bullshit. all these, no, thank all, you. All these like Clint Eastwood, it really happened movies. It's like those installations in museums where it's like you know, find out what it would be like to be on Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> like thirty minute video of like you would be three foot tall because of the gravity. I have to say, I I do not remember when this happened. Uh, him piling the plane. Into uh, Mecca. That was weird. Yeah, that was kind of. <laughs> we have a, 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 a very, very subtle uh, Easter egg joke in the new season of Decker where the a Sully 2 poster in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you see the plane, and you see you see Big Ben in the background. 
<laughs> Here we go again. The River, the river Thames. Uh, the River Thames is in play. Uh, <laughs> that would be way harder than the Hudson River. Yeah, that's true. That's very really small margin. Yeah. 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 Oh, how Sully going to get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, they challenge Sully. Like, if you can land in the Suez Canal, the British Empire gets it back. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a stuffy British co-pilot played yeah. by Colin yeah. Firth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, this is totally irregular, yeah. sir. Yeah. I you can't do a thing to do that. No, no, it's not cricket at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just want to, I'm going to, let me just finish up the finish Tom Hanks up, yeah. anecdote. And then, and then, then yeah, Cernovich, yeah. then yeah. definitely yeah. Cernovich, yeah. Definitely Cernovich. Oh, God, yeah, we can't okay. definitely Mike. Cernovich. Uh, Weird well, Mike. <laughs> Five <laughs> minutes of Cernovich. So this is this is a quick one. He just uh, he sees he sees Tom Hanks and he whose goes, credits include <laughs> big <volunteers>, tears. <laughs> yeah. uh, he Dragnet, goes, <laughs> which is actually a good movie. I shook Tom Hanks' hand and needled him a little. I said, "I understand you don't like Republicans or conservatives very much." He said, "Oh, I like you just fine." Someone suggested we take a picture together as we smiled for the cameras. I turned to Tom Hanks and needled him a little more. I said, just do me a favor, will you? Tell them not to put that movie on uh, any more. <laughs> Tell them not to put that movie on any more of you on that island talking to the volleyball. <laughs> he what? La- <laughs> yeah. what a fucking dick. He laughed and said, don't be criticizing that movie, Governor. That's how I put my kids through college. Oh. That exchange was meaningful to me. Ah! <laughs> not, not, not just what? because... I was I, a huge <laughs> dick to a celebrity. Not just because I'd always admired Tom Hanks' work, but because it gave me an opening to mention. This chance meeting in my interview with Brian Wilson Williams, and to bring up the heroic landing of that airplane on the Hudson <laughs> River, <laughs> putting oh. it out there, how important I thought it was to celebrate our true American heroes. I mind that meeting for Tom everything Hanks. it was worth. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I got some good patter out of it. He really is. He really is. He uses... He's like a he's like a Cherokee. He uses every part of his weird <laughs> weird social interactions. He's like, I can use the beginning, middle, the hello, the goodbye, the weird dickish thing I say. He's like, look, I, I, I know that there's other channels besides TBS, <laughs> but I, I don't like turning the channel. I lost the clicker a while <laughs> yeah. ago. Okay? It's TNT or nothing, and I'm sick of the goddamn volleyball. Uh, stop, stop playing that movie where you talk to the volleyball. That's appropriation of hobo culture. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's, I, I immediately corrected him on the improper way he built a fire by the train tracks in that one. <laughs> oh so yeah, God. that's uh, Governor John Kasich. What we could have yeah, had, yeah, could have had this as president. Could have had that. Yeah, could have had a whole him as other president. side of weird. He could have like. I think there's still t- like we're talking about how easily influenced Trump is. If Trump met Kasich, Trump would be like, "I'm doing a 50 state tour on the rails." Like I'm just I'm going to every diner. I'm gonna complain about it. I'm gonna have weird. I'm gonna meet a moose. Like he's gonna do all the Kasich <laughs> shit. Well, he'll be a good president when the the United States of America dissolves and there's the re, there's the you know the nation states and yeah. he's the president of the Mid Atlantic Union or something. Yeah, yeah he'll like a nice so reasonable when, when, when five states. When the biggest states. percentage of GDP is like recycled cans, <laughs> he's gonna be yeah. He'll be a 15 term president. King, King of the North Pole yeah, will be he, his official title. Yeah. Um, okay, last but not least, uh, that was Kasich. Um, you know, we, uh, we picked it up at the beginning of the show, but we would be remiss uh, if, you know, with Tim joining us not to, uh, not to dip back into the Weird Mike. We got we got we got to do Weird Mike. You know what's real? Can I just my first experience with Weird Mike was yeah. Please yeah. Stop. I, you know, um, well, I didn't know too much about him, and this was like late in the the election last year, uh, towards the end or of the election, but. He, I don't know how I got into it with him on Twitter, but I r- wrote something to him. I didn't know too much about him. I didn't know like his tactics or anything. But he wrote me back saying on Twitter saying, um, I'd be happy to debate you <laughs> about this issue. You name the time, you name the place, right? And I swear to God, I didn't know anything about like his tactics. I'm just t- putting my hand up and promising you this. But I said, sure, let's do it. Um, my charity, let's do it for charity. Because he said for charity, right? right? And I said, my charity is NAMBLA. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is, you laugh. It is obviously a joke, yeah. right? It's yes. like, it's a, it's, it's, the, it's a comic device saying, of course I'm not going to yeah, debate it's, it's, There it's, is it's not going to be a debate. You it would be absurd. Con- yeah. You wouldn't need a contest right. to donate to them. You would just do it. Right. So, <laughs> like I do. So, 
then he went he went like oh my god I just like struck gold this is my, he just played right into my hands uh, he, he just admitted he's a pedophile <laughs> and like all his followers were like this is disgusting how could you I couldn't I was like oh fuck I didn't realize like that's his move yeah because his audience pe- pedo. are the dumbest people on earth uh, uh, me and Virgil were talking about we NAFTA was always just like a I mean NAFTA uh, <laughs> NAMBLA. NAMBLA is always just like a punch it's like a yeah, punchline punch yeah, yeah. 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 Not a, not another r- spider has entered the spider's <laughs> web <laughs> I laid the trap. Me and Virgil were talking about how like his move for everyone is just to call them a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like he should replace Sean Spicer because like okay, Sean Spicer mm-hmm. gets flustered and yeah. uh, Sarah Huckabee get flustered by people being like, You're a fucking idiot. Shut the like yeah. you you're lying to us. But Sternovich logs on every day and just sees Thousands of people being like, "You're the dumbest fucking idiot." Who's <laughs> oh, the ever. pedophiles are out in He's like, "Oh, today. the jealous pedophiles are after yeah. me again." And it's like, we read this thing he wrote once. It's like, ISIS is a brand, and like every brand, you have to make them look bad. And I'm just gonna call them pedophiles. Right. <laughs> and it will. ISIS losing territory. It's working. Yeah, yeah it was a genius. Uh, last year, you remember Ben Sass, right? Right yeah. before Trump clinched the nomination, uh, they wanted to recruit Ben Sass to run for president. There were these rumors about it. Uh, on Mike Cernovich's blog is a post bragging about how he single-handedly prevented Ben Sass from running for president because of, because of a, a tweet he did calling him. Pedo Ben <laughs> It worked. You it don't worked. come back yeah. from that. You're done. It worked. Well, Tim. it's also very hard to prove that you're not a pedophile. It's true. <laughs> it's actually impossible <laughs> to prove. And the only way you can do it is by live streaming every second of your life. <laughs> <laughs> not having sex with children. And Cernovich can do that, but his enemies can't. And yeah. Cernovich, Cernovich This is, is me on a playground. Get those hearts going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being normal right now. Uh, Cernovich is Moadib. He is Paul, Paul Atreides. He has the word that kills. It's pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Tim, you, you you said you didn't know his tactics. You weren't familiar with him. Because was, you didn't know about his mindset. That was mindset. mistake number one. Yeah. Mistake number two was not having strong mindset yourself. Right. My strong gorilla mindset. Yes. Yeah. Having strong gorilla mindset is the key to winning any battle that you may face in your life. And luckily, Mike wrote a whole book about this. Do you have a better understanding of his con- of what gorilla mindset... Because it's like... Okay. The it first ha- instinct to- is sort of being like, why would you want to have a gorilla? Like, that's a lower ev- evolved brain. <laughs> well, someone that's pointed out, they evol- said, he uh, he named his mindset program after the only great ape that can't recognize itself in a mirror. <laughs> okay. Like, like the, um, alone among the great apes, <laughs> gorillas see a f- reflection and think it's a different gorilla. Everything else is like, oh, yeah, that's me. Well, that's you interesting know? because there is a part of the book where he talks about talking to yourself in a mirror. And, oh, and right. like sort of psyching yourself up, and and punching like, the strange man <laughs> in your house. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he doesn't have a lot of a lot of uh, education on what a gorilla is. Like no. he doesn't know much. You just about think the, it's like a big bad ant. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's like a hierarchical animal right, that alpha, denotes virility. Alpha. Kind of thing. Right. The logo but, he has where it's, it's it's a gorilla, and the gorilla has a third eye. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing is that the real meat of Gorilla Mindset is just like self help garbage. Yes. It's right. Just, right. Well, there's also it's just regurgitated. What was that great? Some, there was that great review of the book where the kid was like, uh, "This this is incredible. I've you, I've done every rule. I've practiced it. Um, it has caused a lot of problems. My family's not talking to me. My <laughs> girlfriend left me. I lost my job. And really, he was totally sincere. He's like, but this is the first." Step towards a new life. <laughs> oh my God, Tim. There's also like this. this you must uh, destroy in order to create. Also, there's yeah. kind of parable in the MRA world. Some like you know pseudo scientific thing about a distinction between bonobo culture and I guess gorilla yes. culture. Well, no, but that's like, just, it's the bonobos and the chimps. The gorillas have nothing to do with it. Oh, then I don't know where the gorillas are. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? The pants bonobos? Bonobos, the bonobos are the horny <laughs> chimps. Bonobos are horny chimps. Okay. Basically, they fuck to create structure in their society. I have too much to keep fight. track of. I don't have to know about the different <laughs> apes and gorillas and <laughs> monkeys and stuff. <laughs> All right, so um, we did this on a previous episode, <laughs> read by Weird Mike himself. So, like as we did before, I swear to God, I'm just gonna like play complete. I'm just gonna just jump to like completely random parts of the book and, and just listen to it. And we're just do two or three of these and just see what Weird Mike has to teach us. So <laughs> I'm ready. All right. I am ready. Senpai, teach me. All right, here we go. Well, of who we spend our time with. Are the people you're spending your time with bringing you closer to your goals? Are they leading to more happiness and fulfillment in your life? Are the yeah. activities you engage in 
bringing you closer right. to your goals. No. A lot of times we're just mindless and we don't think about it and we waste a lot of time or we let people take advantage of us and it has to stop because focus has to be ruthless. You have to cut out everything that doesn't bring you closer to your goals. He sounds like Bruno Kirby in Spinal Tap. For example, you don't set a goal to die in a car crash. <laughs> Air horn, air horn, air horn. Okay. You don't set a goal to die in a car crash. If you do that, you'll die in a car crash. Look at me. I'm immune to car crashes. <laughs> yes, if you only orient yourself towards things that don't result in you dying in a car crash, you will never die in a car crash. All right. This is great. I'm, I'm skipping ahead now. Oh, man. His brain is so good. I also run a fan. I get hot at night, so I have a fan blowing on my face at night. Oh, well, I do that, too. That makes Everyone sense. does that. You can also get a humidifier next to your bed, especially when it's very dry out. Right now, I live in a very humid climate, so I don't have that problem. After I take my clothes out of the washer, I put it in a dryer. (laughs) Trash goes in the trash. Have you thought about how much money you spend on your bed? Do you have the best quality mattress that you can afford? Come on down down to Sealy's. I'm not trying to eat a Folks, the CapsaMattress.com. They'll they'll send you a fantastic mattress. Hey, what the fuckers? How's your mindset doing? Uh, before we get in our interview with Barack Obama, <laughs> I want to ask: So, who, what, what are you? What are you? What are your affirmations, man? Do you set out to die in a car accident? <laughs> first, uh, first audiobook to have commercials <laughs> built into. Yeah, it. but we know for a fact that Cernovich spends twenty hours a day at a desk <laughs> with a periscope going. That is not fucking yeah. rigorous. I like to imagine a f- very high-powered fan like blowing on his face as he sleeps. <laughs> Ever, the, t- the tight, the Dyson Airblade <laughs> is creating new waves in my brain all the time. <laughs> I I sleep in a wind tunnel. <laughs> he's got one of those like uh, he's got one of those uh, like craftmatic beds, and he sleep makes it into a V <laughs> with his legs yeah. and head up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, do not walk into the Dyson Airblade. That will take you into the mirror dimension. <laughs> <laughs> no one have make the plan to stick the head in the Dyson Airblade. <laughs> I though it may seem tempting, putting your nutsack in the Dyson Airblade. <laughs> Everyone wants a smooth nutsack, but it is impossible. And accepting that about yourself is the first step towards having a brain that does not wish to die in a hot air balloon accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 do let's do two more selections. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay, here we go. This is, this is another again completely random. You're gonna play with your own money. Play with other people's money. Play with house money. Yeah, man. That's yeah. when you make the real big money. So we want the to real big an investor, money. not a trader, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that. Oh. It's real simple. Dollar cost average into low cost index funds. Oh. Oh. The secret is the real demand. Just means you buy into the market and low-cost mutual funds at regular intervals. I'm going to buy at such and such date. For example, I buy low-cost funds every three months, like clockwork. What? <laughs> what? That's uh, horrible. Is, that's advice. the worst <laughs> advice I've ever heard. Uh, when, you, when you want to invest in shares, you can't go wrong with the stock market. <laughs> but, when it, but when it comes to stocks... Don't forget about supply and demand. <laughs> you gotta buy stocks if you want to get in the stock market. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Wait, don't sorry, be what? a. Why would you want to make a little bit of money in the stock market when you can make a lot of money? Yeah. In the, stock market? <laughs> the big problem, the, the big problem people run into is they buy things high and then they sell them either high or in the worst case low. <laughs> you will lose money if you do this. All right, this one is from the, the beginning of the book. I- there are days I still feel like the fat kid who was afraid to walk home from school. But here I am, successes, failures, and flaws, and all their shame and all their glory. Hell yeah. So maybe you'll find the answer to what you're looking for. But I'm going to ask you, isn't it time for you to get serious? <laughs> if you want to change your mindset, you have to know what is mindset. Mindset is a set of assumptions, methods, or beliefs that you live by, and what other people live by, and that it modifies your behavior and changes your behavior. In other words, if you have certain mindset beliefs, you're going to behave according to those beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Imagine a computer. So Monitor, keyboard, and processor are all the hardware. Without any software to run it, your computer would be worthless. Your body is your hardware, and your mindset is your operating system. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the fuck are you talking Once about? Once again, mindset, Mike is just describing having Having thoughts. a fucking yeah. brain. Yeah. <laughs> having a fucking it's brain. It's having higher consciousness. Yeah. Some people go about their lives regularly. Me? Me? 
I have a organ evacuation period. <laughs> and I make the active decision to get rid of the waste that's in my body that is not being product used productively because we have to operate at 100% if we're going to achieve greatness. And we can't do that if we have a bunch of brown fecal matter sitting in our lower intestine. I know that if I don't momentarily close my eyes every few seconds, my mm -hmm. eyes are going to dry out. I have <laughs> <laughs> I have total body awareness. I can yeah. feel every muscle in my rectal area, yeah. and I command it to to push the the fecal matter down and yeah. not up. If you do right. up, it's just going to go up to your stomach, and it's going to yeah. cause a lot of problems for your posture. Yeah, and I keep it closed when I'm not you know, I'm, I'm sitting on a toilet because if I opened it up randomly at any point of the day, I'd be sitting my pants. <laughs> the biggest thing you're going to want to look out for while you while you are trying to achieve your goals in business and relationships is for your car to continually pump blood through your body. <laughs> if you do do not do this, your brain is going to stop working, you will stop breathing, and you will cease to be alive. <laughs> and it is very hard to accomplish your goals as a dead person. People have done it, but it's not the best, it is not the optimum position to but try But the thing from. that takes the most amount of work and the most amount of a mental focus and concentration is when I see like a six or seven year old boy walking around the street, I have to remind myself, he is not to be fucked. <laughs> he, is, he is off limits. He is off limits. I have to keep telling myself that. <laughs> oh, fuck you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself for a bit. Fuck you forever and ever. I want to be an 80 year old man sending out the message fuck you weird Mike you're uh, never getting away with what you did to Vic Berger you yeah, go fuck shit. yourself I think that's a, yeah, that's a good, good place to end it that's a great way to uh, end yeah um, Tim, Tim Heidecker oh, th thanks so much for Thank joining us so man. this is awesome until next time guys cheers bye bye, bye, bye everyone bye. Mind oh, mindset oh,